Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give God glory and we give God praise tonight as we are joining for another healing service to, to hear, to experience God and to hear what God wants to speak tonight to encourage our hearts. Glory to God. I am Karina Maltzby and I will be your host tonight for tonight's healing service. Uh, we give honor tonight to Apostle Marquita, who is the um, national coordinator for the invitation movement as well as the uh, ministry leader and founder of the truth in the spirit ministry so we give honor to her tonight uh, we the invitation movement is about us accepting god's invitation to meet him where he is working to turn this nation back to him one city at a time and that's what we're doing when we're coming on we're gathering believers from across this nation to hear what the lord is speaking, uh, to, to um, come together, to, to listen to each other's stories and testimonies of what God is doing, uh, to build up hope in us that God has a plan. Uh, he, his plan is not going to be thwarted. Hallelujah. That his plan is going to go forth. Glory to God. And what can we do? We can participate in his plan. And we want our nation to be exactly what God intended for it to be. Hallelujah. That we can be instrumental in bringing in the harvest of souls into the kingdom, uh, that we can be those ambassadors for the kingdom. Glory to God. And so that's what we're doing. We're coming together so that we can heal uh, in the body and then we can go out and be instrumental in, in, in orchestrating and encouraging others that this is what our God does. He heals the brokenhearted. He restores, he delivers, and he saves. And it's through his son, Yeshua Hamashiach, glory to God, that we experience this. Hallelujah. And so tonight uh, in our healing service, uh, we will have a uh, worship by the Davids, glory to God. So even in that time of worship, we just encourage you to just surrender your heart, glory to God, just um, just allow Holy Spirit and, and the words uh, to minister to you as you minister back uh, to the Father, glory to God. And then we will, um, I will come back and share a, a testimony entitled, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit and the blood and uh, dispensable glory to God. And then we will have our guest tonight, Prophetess Karen Ruth with Prophetess Karen Ruth Ministry. She's gonna be giving us an exhortation titled, The Blood is Still the Blood, glory to God. So we have a lot tonight to just, um, to experience, to experience God, experience what he's saying, uh, allowing him to come in and just encourage our hearts and strengthen us and empower us for this journey in life with him. Hallelujah. So let's pray before we go into worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We honor you. We reverence you tonight because you are good and there is none like you. There is none that compares to you. Hallelujah. There is none more greater than you, none more stronger, none more wiser. Father, you are the great I am. And so we thank you tonight that we have the opportunity to come before your presence to get before your presence and worship, to get before your presence and to hear what you want to speak to us, your people, to who, what you want to speak to us, your children tonight. And for that, we give you glory. For that, we give you praise. Father, we thank you that you sent your son to heal the brokenhearted, hallelujah, to, to set the captive free. Father, you've, you sent your son with his blood, his atoning blood to wash away every stain, every sin, so that we may live life and life more abundantly through him. So we thank you tonight, Holy Spirit, that you come, that you come and work through this service, speak through your ministers of music, through the minister tonight, uh, to bless your people, to shift us, to change our perspective. Uh, we speak to every heart tonight, every ear, hallelujah, that the ears be open to hear and to receive, and the hearts be open to perceive 
We thank you that the seeds that will be sown through worship and through the word, that it will be planted into the good soil and that it will take root. Hallelujah. Father, tonight that there will even be watering tonight, God, of every seed that is planted. And Father, you will give the increase. We thank you for increase tonight, increase in every area of our lives, naturally and spiritually by your hand and by your spirit. So we thank you tonight, Father, for you working because you never stop working. You're always working. You're consistent. We can trust you. We can put, we can bank on you, Father. And for that, we give you glory. And for that, we give you praise, praise, and we bless your holy name, Yeshua, tonight. In Yeshua's name, we pray, glory to God, amen. And at this time, we are going to go into worship, glory to God. Worthy are you, Lord, worthy are you. How wonderful are you, God. Just sit quiet before you, Lord, make it quiet before you. Father, just breathe. Breathe into us, Lord God. Yes, Lord spirit God. Through Ruach HaKadosh. Father, we desire to serenade your heart what you desire to hear, not what we want to perform, Lord God. Yes, yes, so we declare ourselves that worthy are you. Yes, worthy are you, Lord God. <laughs> so hard to hear your voice, Lord, with distractions all around. I try to leave my hands to give you the praise, but then the spirit of heaviness tries to shield my faith. So I'm saying, Lord, breathe into me, oh Lord. The breath of life, so that my spirit would be whole, and my heart made right. Breathe into me, O oh Lord, day by day, so that my heart is pure before you. Always and always, give me a clean heart. In the right spirit, give me a clean heart. In the right spirit, give me a clean heart. In the right spirit, give me a clean heart. In the right spirit.
quenched our thirst alone. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What beautiful worship, what beautiful worship tonight. Glory to God. I love how the, the minister's song, So My Heart is Pure Before You. We are singing this to our Father, to Abba. Breathe, Holy Spirit, so I'm, I can be made whole. Breathe into me, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, breathe into us so that we may live holy draw from his well the living water like just just beautiful worship to lift up your spirit lift up your soul to encourage you that as I say every time that I'm administering the the healing service that worship it, it does something he he comes and inhabits the praises of his people and worship just lifts up any heaviness any care any burden that the 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 when we get into worship it shifts things it shifts our perspective it, it brings joy uh, and peace to us that literally we can keep moving forward we can keep taking one step after the next with him hallelujah encourage us in that way and so we thank god for the opportunity to worship him to worship him in spirit and in truth Glory to God. And I just want to share a little um, just testimony of uh, what, what uh, Holy Spirit revealed to me this morning um, as I um, awoken this morning. Um, you know, as, as we are in the season and time of remembering and celebrating our Passover lamb, uh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and him giving of himself as a sacrifice on the cross and his uh, shedding of his blood for our atonement, um, it, it really reminded me this morning that um, it afforded us uh, an opening of, of access to the Father. 
Um, and it encouraged me because I heard the word indispensable. And, and I was led to read John 16 this morning. And in John 16, um, Yeshua, Jesus was speaking to the Taladim. He was speaking to his disciples um, and, and he was about to fulfill um, his assignment in the earth. Um, he was about to go away. Um, he had been with them and now he was having to leave. And how it, the word of God says, he said to them, it is best for me to leave. And one translation says it's to your advantage that I leave um, because his leaving was going to release help for them um, and ultimately for us. His blood his, that he was going to shed on the, on the cross, that crimson flow, as we sing that song, that crimson flow, the blood, it never loses its power, how it reaches to the lowest valley, how it flows to the highest mountain, how it gives us strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. And I love how he described to his disciples um, what the Holy, that by him leaving, it was going to um, bring forth the Holy Spirit. He said that the Holy Spirit is going to come and how Holy Spirit is going to reveal the truth to them and how Holy Spirit is going to guide them and how he was going to announce to them the events of the future um, and, and how Holy Spirit will, will bring Yeshua glory by telling them whatever they, whatever the Holy Spirit received from Yeshua. So I was just encouraged this morning because the Holy Spirit said indispensable. And so let me define that word to you. It says indispensable means absolutely necessary. I like how the Collins English uh, Dictionary states, if you say that something or someone is indispensable, you mean that they are absolutely essential and other uh, people or things cannot function without them. Some synonyms for indispensable, key, vital, of the essence, significant, acute, paramount. That, that is what Holy Spirit is for us. We would have only, um, we only have been afforded the Holy Spirit by Yeshua, the Messiah being the Passover lamb, only by him sacrificing himself, the shedding of his blood. And we're going to have our minister tonight to talk about the blood is still the blood, glory to God. Um, that cleansing flow, it allows Holy Spirit to remind us that in those times where it's hard, where there's challenge, uh, that we can persevere. He will bring in truth through the power of the blood and be with you, be with us, telling us that you can press through, you can overcome this. Literally, there is deliverance through the blood. He reminds us of the power uh, through the blood that we can be delivered. He reminds us that there is a way of escape. He shows us no, he shows us the truth in a matter. He shows us the truth in a situation. And that's what I was getting, like Holy Spirit, he's gonna show us the truth in a matter. He's gonna show us when we don't, when we're looking at a situation, we're looking at a matter, we can ask Holy Spirit and he will reveal the truth concerning that matter. He reminds us of the way of this of escape. He gives us the perspective of heaven, the perspective of the Father, the perspective of the Messiah. He reminds us the blood was shed to bring forth truth, the truth through the Holy Spirit. I am encouraged that no matter what challenge we face, Holy Spirit, no matter what challenge I face, Holy Spirit will give me the truth. I must access the truth through the Holy Spirit. So I want to encourage you tonight as I was encouraged. This is my little test. This is my testimony this morning from this morning. You can endure, you can persevere, you can make it through. There is a way out. There is a way of escape. This thing is only temporary. Why? Because Holy Spirit is indispensable. We need him. We need him, glory to God. He came. Yeshua sent him. He came because Yeshua gave him to us. He, Yeshua, is our Passover lamb. And because of his sacrificing of himself, because of him giving of his blood, his atoning blood, Holy Spirit reminds us of the blood that has come to cleanse us, the blood that has come to wash us, wash away our sins, to purify us. We cannot do it in and of ourselves. Apart from the blood, we are filthy, rags, glory to God. But it is the power of the blood and Holy 
Holy Spirit that are indispensable. They are key. They are vital. It is essential. It is significant. It is paramount. It is acute to our lives. And for that, God, I give you glory and I give you praise. No matter what, tap into Holy Spirit. He is indispensable. He is what we need. He is, and I'm going to read that definition again states that if you say that someone or something is indispensable, you mean that they are absolutely essential and other people or things cannot function without them. We don't want to do this uh, life without Holy Spirit. He, Yeshua sent him for a purpose, uh, to be our comforter, our advocate, our guide, uh, to keep us in the way of truth. And so I thank God for that reminder this morning, for that encouragement to my heart this morning. And I pray that it will encourage you when times get tough, when times get hard, where we're, we get into a place that we may not be as sure, we can be sure with Holy Spirit. We can get truth through Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of truth. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. And so uh, next up, we're going to have a powerful, uh, blessed, anointed woman of God, Prophetess Karen Ruth, coming from uh, Prophetess Karen Ruth Ministries. If you would like to connect with her, you can connect with her on Instagram. She um, encourages the body of believers. She uh, encourages marriages. She's been very uh, instrumental in encouraging marriages and even uh, single uh, women, Pouring into them what the Lord gives her, speaking life over them, speaking life over our marriages. Um, hallelujah. Just a, 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 she has a love for the body, for the sheep. And God uses her in such amazing, extraordinary ways to just encourage, uplift, and impart. And so I thank God for her coming tonight to just exhort us and bless us and what the Lord has given her. So I'm going to turn it over to her. Um, for her to minister what the Lord has uh, placed on her, her heart tonight. Hallelujah. Prophetess, go ahead and unmute yourself too as well. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me see here. And I can try to unmute, unmute you. Give us one moment. Hallelujah. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Praise God. Um, I thank you for the opportunity. I give God all the glory and um, all the honor. And um, you were just blessing me with your testimony. I'm like, okay, you're just all in it. <laughs> you're just all in it. And, and he is, he is, um, mighty Holy Spirit is everything, everything that we need, we can go to the mighty Holy Spirit. And it's because of the blood of Jesus um, that was shed on the cross. And I'm going to be in Hebrews tonight, Hebrews, the 10th chapter, the 19th through the 22nd verse. Uh, my God, mighty King, mighty King, mighty King of glory. Uh, my mighty King of glory, the greatest I am, the greatest King, the greatest Lord, the greatest I am. He is King of glory. And we just give him all the praises. We enter in to his presence. Uh, just, re just release whatever it is that you have that, that is heavy on you because he wants to take that weight off of you. He wants to make that load light. He doesn't want you to carry anything because he's already carried it to the cross. He's already taken care of it because of the blood of Jesus, my God, because of his blood that dripped off of the cross. He kind of, he says, I'm my little I come to make your burdens light tonight. I come to take it and you don't have to carry it anymore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I was just thinking about some things that I had been going through. And um, I know that the Lord, the Lord is a heavy load lifter. I know that the blood was all, has already paid the price for every weight that comes to try and weigh us down. And so I had to step back and remind myself, God, you are carrying this. I don't have to carry this. 
And that's what he wants you to know. You don't have to carry it. The blood has already paid the price for whatever weights that comes your way. You don't have to carry it. You don't have to, you don't have to bear that burden. You don't have to worry about those things that come to try and pull you down, that comes to try to stress you out, that comes to try and turn you around, that comes and try to detour you, that comes to try and make you give up. You don't have to deal with that because the blood has already taking care of it. The mighty Holy Spirit, he comes to help us through it. He comes to pull us through. If we need something, we need to call on Jesus. That's who we need to call on. We need to call on the mighty Holy Spirit. And that's our inheritance. We have a great inheritance. It's, the, it's in his promise. He tells us that he is a heavy load lifter. He is a burden bearer. He is our provider. He is our healer. And when we are um, stressed out and pulled down in so many different ways, I'm going to try to calm down and, 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 and speak this the way the Lord has given it to me. Because so many times we're pulled in so many di directions that we feel that we have, we're obligated to fulfill those things. And we, we are not obligated to do anything other than what the Lord thy God has called us to do. And so when we go to the Lord, just like the woman of God said, we have to allow him to lead us and direct us. We have to go to him and ask him to tell us which direction to go, what to do and what not to do, how to do it and how not to do it. And so that's what's so precious about the blood of Jesus because we inherited the blood, the blood that is still the blood. It still has its power and it will never lose its power. And so in, in Hebrews, it says, and now we are brothers and sisters in God's family because of the blood of Jesus. And he welcomes us to come into the most holy sanctuary in the heavenly realm. And I look at that as that we have a secret place that we can enter in. We have a private place. We have a place that we can go and hide. And I'm reminded of the tomb when the, when the, um, the stone was rolled from the front of the tomb. It was rolled from the front of the tomb because um, our pastor um, explained it today and it, it just gave me such a revelation. He said it wasn't rolled away from the front of the tomb so he can come out, but it was for us to come in. And so that's our, our, our um, place that we can enter in. He says, enter into my gates with thanksgiving and enter into my courts with praise. Be thankful unto me and bless my name for the Lord is good and his, his mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. So we have a, a hiding place. We have a holy place. We have a private place. We have a secret place that we can enter in. And I look at that tomb as that place that God provided for us to enter in and see the um, power of the Lord, to see who he really is, the power, the miracle that he had just performed, that he was no longer dead, that he was yet still alive. But he brought light in that tomb. It was no longer dark. I can believe that it was not no longer a dark place to enter, but it was a, a place of light that will bring light into our life. And so when I begin to see See that I say, wow, Lord, that's powerful. I say that is so powerful because we need a place, a secret place that we can go in and enter in and know that it's um, safe there. He's, he wants to he wants to provide a safe place for us to go. So we're not alone. We don't have to deal with this alone. We don't have to we don't have to carry the load. We don't have to. Um, Pull the load ourselves because he said, I'm going to take you. I'm going to carry the load for you. And so we're going to read on. And it says that boldly and without hesitation, we enter into that sanctuary in the heavenly realm. I'm reading from the TPT, the um, Passion Translation. He says, boldly, without hesitation. He wants us to just freely come in. He says, for he has dedicated a new life-giving way for us to approach God. A new 
come on now, a new life giving way to approach God so that we can go to him on any terms, no matter what the terms is, we can just freely go to him. He says we can be comfortable in his presence. We can comfortably go to him and then we can be safe in his presence because he is not going to um, turn us away. He's going to always be there for us. He's waiting to come and take care of whatever it is that we're going through. So I, I bless the Lord for the power of the blood that's still the blood. Amen. Um, for just as the veil was torn in two, Jesus' body was torn open to give us free and fresh access to him. We can go to him at any time. We can go to him in the midnight hour. We can go to him early in the morning. We can go through to him in the middle of the day, all through the day. Whenever we need anything, we can go to Jesus. And we need to learn to go to the mighty Holy Spirit. We need to learn to go to him. We need to learn that we do have a mighty Holy Spirit that we can um, lean on and depend on, that he can direct us and show us the direction to go in. If we need an answer, we can go to him. If we need help with anything, we can go to him. We can go to him for anything that we need. All we have to do is enter in. He say, enter into my gates with thanksgiving. And he say, free access. Free access, free access. He says, so you can become without hesitation, come boldly into that special place that I've created for you. And he says, I will be there for you every time, every time. Amen. And so it goes on to say, um, and since we now have a magnificent high priest to welcome us into God's house, we can come closer to God and approach him with an open heart. He wants us to be close to him. He wants us to be so close that we don't make a, we don't make a, a, a decision unless we consult the mighty Holy Spirit. We don't, we don't even move forward unless we have his okay. We don't even, our mind won't even entertain it unless he says it's okay to entertain this. This is okay. You know, he wants, he wants us to lean and depend on him. And he wants him, he wants him to, um, he wants to be just second nature that um, whatever it is that we feel comfortable enough, free enough, to just come to him and talk to him about it. And he wants to answer us. He has an answer. Just like the woman of God said, he has a plan, an expected end for his people. He, he has it already laid out. All we have to do is come to him and follow him step by step. He has the way. Just go to him and he will tell you exactly what to do and exactly how to do it. I've had so many times that I've had um, decisions to make and I didn't know exactly what to do. But as I prayed on it, as I, la as I labored before the Lord, as I entered into his gates with thanksgiving, as I consulted the Lord, he would always come to me with an answer. It might not have been right away, but he always had an answer for me and he always geared me in the right direction because he has our best interests at heart. So why wouldn't we choose him? Why wouldn't we go to him? He's, he wants to encourage us. He wants to build us up. He wants to strengthen us. He wants to give us what we need to make it through whatever it is that we have a challenge with. Whatever it is on our job, whatever it is in our home, on our house, in our house, in the marketplace, wherever it is in your family, wherever it is, even in ministry, he wants you to come to him. And he says, I will be there for you. I will answer. I will answer the knock, knock on the door. He says, seek my face and, and, and I will answer. Call on me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. So it goes on to say that, um, we will come closer to God and approach him with an open heart, fully convinced that nothing will keep us at a distance from him. He wants us to be close. So 
So he, he talks about distance again. First, he said to be closer to him. And then he talks about nothing to keep us in a distance from him. So he wants us to walk closely with him. In order to walk closely with the Lord, you got to, you got to get to know the Lord. In order to get to know the Lord, you have to spend time with the Lord. So getting in his presence throughout the day, meditating on him day and night, and observing to do according to what all is written therein, then he will make your way prosperous. He will cause you to have good success. He wants you to be closer to him and he wants to give you the things that he promises to give you, but you have to walk closer to him. That's our inheritance. We inherited those promises because of the blood that was shed on the cross. And I, I bless the Lord for the inheritances that he has given us, the promises that he has given us and he doesn't break his promise. He keeps his promise. And you can sure, surely take it to the bank. It's like having a treasure chest and not tapping into it. It's like having having an inheritance and not um benefiting from it. If you don't ever get to walk closer to the Lord, if you don't ever spend time with the Lord, if you don't ever get in his presence and walk, walk in his word and, and spend time in his word, you just like you have a, 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 a treasure chest that you're not um have any access to because you're not tapping in to what he wants you to tap into. Um, the way I was seeing it earlier today, it was like having a bank account, but you forgot the, the number. You forgot your account number. You can't even you can't even get what belongs to you because you didn't spend the time that you needed to spend with God to walk closely with you so he can reveal those secret things unto you. Oh, my God, my God, he does not want us to miss out. He does not. He said, I will keep you in the loop. He said, I will keep you in the loop. You got to spend time with him. He has all the answers. He has everything you need. He has the provision. He has the full supply. Nothing missing and nothing broken. So he wants you to get it all. I don't want to miss out on anything. I'm always telling the women of God, I said, I don't want to miss out on anything. I don't want to leave nothing on the table. So I want to get mine. I want the account number. I want the passcode. I want it all so I can get what belongs to me. If he says it belongs to me, then I want it because that was that was the price that was paid. The blood of Jesus, it was paid for us. It was already taken care of. It's already ours. It already belongs to us. So why not enjoy the benefits of the Lord? Why not enjoy what God has for us when we are, we are weighed down? He says, I'll lift those burdens off of you. When we're sick or when I, we're troubled in our spirits, and he says, I'll come in and give you peace. Why not experience that? That's part of the package. That's part of the blessings that God has for us. So we need to get it all. All we have to do is tap in, spend time. In order to, to learn what's in the, in the manual, don't you have to read the manual? Don't you have to spend time in the manual? Don't you have to walk closely in the manual to get the blessings that God has for you? He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you joy. He say, in my presence, there's fullness of joy. That's all part of the inheritance. That's all part of the package. So we have to spend that time in the Lord so we can get the fullness thereof. He don't want you missing or nothing broken. He don't want you um, to get a partial um, supply. He wants you to get the full supply. And um, I just bless the Lord. And it goes on to say, um, for our hearts have been sprinkled with blood to remove all impurities. And um, we have been freed from an accusing conscience where our conscience want to come and remind us of our past. Our conscience will come and say, you don't deserve what God has for you, but the devil is a liar. We deserve it all because God paid it all. So it all belongs to us and we don't have to um, 
walk in a unclean and un, uh, unclean spirit or unclean uh, unrighteousness because his his blood has already cleansed us it, it has washed us it has purified us that's what it came to do it came to keep us and separate us from all unrighteousness all uncleanliness so the our conscience don't have to remind us of our past our past is dead it died on the cross and now we live we have we have to forget about those things which are behind and reach unto those things which are before us. In order to live in the future, we got to forget and let the, the past die in order to have a future to live with Christ. So those are the things that the enemy would like us to remember. He would like us to remember those things of the past. He will, He want us to remember what we used to do. He want us to remember the things that we didn't do right. But we don't have to entertain that. He says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching unto those things which are before. He has such a much better future for us if we can just die of ourselves, die of, of our past, our old self, because we are new now. Things are new. It's a new way of living. It's a new way of approaching the Lord. It's a new way of living that we can enjoy the fullness of God and all that he has for us. It says, now we are clean, unstained, and presentable to God inside and out. And so that's what that's what we're striving for. That's what we're persevering for. We want to get better at it. We want to do better. We ask, we're asking God, God, show us how to do it better. God, show us how, show us your way. Mighty Holy Spirit, show us what pleases you, what makes you happy. Because we want a clean heart. We want a right heart. We want to please the Lord. We want to put a smile on his face, just like he put a smile on our face. He did this all for us. So we should be willing to do it all for him. Whatever it is that he wants us to do, we should yield to the mighty Holy Spirit. We should say yes to his way and yes to his will. We should be in agreement. We should partner up with the mighty Holy Spirit so that we can walk in the way that he wants us to walk in. And we can forget about the old way and grab hold to the new way because there's greater things that's lying ahead of us. He wants us to go to greater heights. He wants us to accelerate. He wants us to elevate. He wants us to go higher. And that's what it's all about. He has greater for us. And we have to take the limits off. We have to stop putting the limits on the mighty power of God. There is no limit. There is no limit on the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus covers us. The blood of, Je of Jesus heals us. It's, it's, it came and it brought healing. It came and it brought deliverance. It came and it, and it set us free. And we just want to bless the Lord and his blood and the mighty Holy Spirit. Everything that he paid on that cross, it was not in vain. It was not in vain. And I believe that we, we don't appreciate it as much as we should appreciate it because we don't grab hold to it. We don't celebrate it the way we should celebrate it. We don't walk in it the way he wants us to walk in it. So um, I believe that we need to be encouraged tonight. Be encouraged to, to celebrate the blood of Jesus, to celebrate the, um, the sacrifice that he made on his cross. We need to celebrate the opportunity that he has given us to have eternal life. We should celebrate the, uh, the ability to walk in freedom, to walk in, we are not in bondage anymore. The chains are broken. The, uh, my the, the yoke is destroyed. The yoke is destroyed from off our necks. Amen. And so we should celebrate and thank God for what he has given us and how we can walk in it even the more perfectly, that, that we can allow him to lead us and guide us in that perfect way that he has for us, that we can take hold to everything that he has laid before us so that we can make a difference, not only that it can make a difference in our life, but we can be a difference in others, that we can bring a an invitation to Christ that we can introduce them to something that's greater than what they have in the world. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Amen.
<laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, woman of God. What such encouragement, such encouragement tonight. The blood is still the blood. The blood has afforded us Holy Spirit. There's there's benefits. There's a package that we must tap into, that we must access. I love how the woman of God gave so many good key points tonight. I love how you said God reminded you, like it's like having a bank account but not having the account number. Like you you have access but you can't even get into the access. And and how we have to enter in what Yeshua Jesus did for us allows us to enter in enter in uh and freely hallelujah have access glory to god so that we can receive the package the benefits of him shedding his blood the blood it will never lose its power it's reaching down deep hallelujah you could be down in a pit the blood will reach down in the pit and pull you up out. Hallelujah. You can be up high. It's no matter where you are, the blood will reach you. It will reach you. And all you have to do is receive. All we, the, the Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Yeshua is Lord. We repent of our sins and we believe, we believe in our heart heart and we confess with our mouth hallelujah and he will come and send that blood to cleanse us to be that atoning for us hallelujah so then we can do as a woman of God says we can come in and approach father God hallelujah to get access to what we need from him do we need peace do we need joy do we need strength literally everything that we need can, can we fathom that that is everything that we need everything if we look up the definition of everything it's like all things so it, it, glory to god let us not forget that tonight let us be encouraged tonight that the blood still works that he's a he's given us the mighty holy spirit and woman of god has even shared many testimonies uh just of how holy spirit has been a blessing in her life leading guiding um as she shared in her ministry that i'm a part of how holy spirit has just led and guided and directed her and and it's just such encouragement because that's who we have access that's our partner we partner up with him and he's been sent to guide us to be our advocate to be our counselor hallelujah to 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 decipher the the good from the bad the evil from the the truth he that's what he does for us and, and that's powerful we let's not forget about the holy spirit let's not forget about the blood hallelujah so before we get ready to close out thank you Woman of God for blessing us tonight in this healing service. Uh, before we close out with the ironic blessing, I just want to share uh, the Invitation Movement's uh, website with you all. If you're new um, to uh, the Invitation Movement, just want to share that with you. Again, this is God inviting us to meet him where he is working, to turn this nation back to himself one city at a time. And we, we want everyone to join into this movement. Um, and you can come to the website, www.invitationmvmt.org to read more about the movement. Hallelujah. How God has given a strategy. See, that's what even through Holy Spirit, he gives us the strategies. Hallelujah. The strategies in the invitation movement is to healing services, peace strategies, and um, justice acts. God has given the formula. And what we're doing is we're following the formula so that we can turn this nation back to him. And in addition to what you'll find on the Invitation Movement's website, you'll find the word of the Lord for the USA from 2021 to the millennial reign that was given to Apostle Marquita Brooks, as well as you can read uh, more about the National Kingdom Council. And from that, how the Declaration of Kingdom Standards for the United States was uh, created. These are the standards that the Lord has given to really encourage um, and promote healing um, in seven key areas. And in the last month, we talked about women's rights um, and abortion. But there are seven key areas um, that are, are very um, significant in, in the United States. And God gives a strategy, key, and understanding of how to deal with each one of those areas. So we would love for you to come um, 
and share your testimony, share your, your story. How is God uh, promoting healing in your area? How is God working and moving in your, your city, in your town? And, and we want you to come on and share that. If you come to this page, there is the option to glory to God to share um, your story. And we would love for you to come on and report our, even come to give an exhortation to encourage the body as we come together and promote healing and unity in the body. We come together in, in peace and in brotherly love for one another. So then we can go out and administrate that. We can go out and show that and be an example uh, in the earth. When the body is united, then we can show the world what unity looks like, what peace looks like, because God would have imparted his peace in us then we can show the world what, what is peace. Peace is found in God. This is what peace is. Peace is, is comes from the Father above. He gives us that peace that surpasses all understanding. Glory to God. So we are going to turn it over to the Davids as they uh, administer the ironic blessing over us. That's a part of that covenant. That's a part of that blessing, that uh, that package deal that we receive the ironic blessing that it is God speaking over us. So we turn it over to the Davids and we thank you all for tuning in tonight and join us again tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for another healing service. Be blessed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hearts to receive your blessing, Lord God. Amen and amen. Blessing.